Hi, darlings. Maria West here. Welcome to Love, Truth, and Beauty. This is episode 301. Yes. And this is my 10th installment of my video series, Conversations with Men. And I have with me today my good friend, Oscar Butler, major, major musician, singer, songwriter. I don't even know what else. Yeah, well, there are quite a number of things. He's a fitness expert. He's a father. He is uh, just an amazing human being. Oscar, welcome to the program. Thanks for being here. Thank you. It's so good to see and be here to see you again because I haven't seen you in a while. I know. So. I know. The last time we were just getting ready to, I was getting ready to launch to go off to um, one of my bigger trips. And then, and then the COVID happened. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you? How are you? I'm good. I mean, my usually to that question, my my regular answer has become, I'm living the dream. Yeah, I, you are. Just... <laughs> you are living the dream. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you, particularly on this video series, because we've been going through so much turmoil out in the world, out in the matrix. And here you are because I've been I've been following you. I've been keeping track of you um, since the last time we saw each other. I think it was 2018. And you're just going, you're going higher and higher and higher and higher. And I'm like going, he's just fucking rocking it. Oh my god. <laughs> so okay, tell us what is your secret, my friend? <laughs> I, I Photoshop really well, <laughs> <laughs> and I I say that because it, it's funny because I you know I see uh, I get that from a lot of people that you know I'm so busy I'm the busiest person and I am busy but in my mind I'm thinking well I my goal is to make it look that way which I think I do a good job you, but you I, do I a have been fantastic busy. job. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've seen your show list. I mean, it's just, it just, you just, it goes on and on and on and on and on. And I think, I think one of the most important things, especially as an artist, and especially as an artist of a certain age, you know, because we have to transcend so much of the media matrix mind control bullshit about how old you're supposed to be and when it's supposed to happen and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know, whatever. And everything you do, from what I witness, is in contribution to you living the dream. That's mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. It's it, it it is, you know, and and it's taken me a while to get to that point where I'm I'm feeling, wow, this is really great. But it's still to me, it's still very scary. I mean, when I when I decided, um, I think it was back in 2017, 27 that. Yeah. when I decided to become a full-time musician I mean there was I, I read this book and I just said well you know what and, and basically in the book what it said was you know or do you want to be on your deathbed like regretting never Yikes. having done that yeah. thing of your heart and the thing was is it, that after reading that it, I was in tears because I could really see myself just oh, laying wow. there getting ready to die and then thinking shit why didn't I you know try that why didn't I do it and, and I, like after that I put my month notice in, in my job and was out so I mean it was a scary thing but it was I realized that I'd rather try and fail than never try <laughs> yeah what what was the book if I may ask um unfuck yourself how to get out of your head and in or out of oh, your, that's you know, a out great of your head book and oh live your life God. yeah it was I mean that's a, and that was in the last chapter and the thing is is that I um I travel I've been driving a, a lot now because I'm all over the state and I'm um, up into Colorado and I I listened to that book I got the audio version of it and I listened to it at least twice a month yeah and I just got through listening to it just to remind me yeah because <clears throat> it, it gets scary out here yeah no no it really does because what you're doing though and I have to give I have to give you you know huge props because I remember when you did quit your career and uh yeah and tell us a little bit about that what you were up to because you were doing some really fantastic hard ass uh, work <clears throat> right i was yeah i was uh, working for a nonprofit for it was a a local uh homeless shelter and when i got came on i came on as a part-timer um 
to work as an outreach worker, you know, so, and there was only one guy who was heading up this, this crew. And then I was added to his crew. But the thing was, he was leaving within a week after I got there. So I ended up being the lead on this outreach crew in a homeless, at a homeless shelter wow. in all around Albuquerque. Wow. And it, it, I mean, that, that part was great. I, um, about the third, I think the third year in, I, um, was just having some issues, some politics within the company and, um, and just decided to become a uh, caseworker. But man, that kicked my butt. I mean, and I, and I tip my hat to people who do it, but I wasn't one of them. Cause I mean, I, I would wake up and I was miserable. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I yeah. would drive to work saying, I hate my job. I hate my job. Yeah. And, and there's nothing like that, my friends, where you're just, and if it's a have to situation, I mean, that, that feeling of trapped. So you went from that extreme to this dream, dream yeah. boat that you just embarked upon. Yeah. And it, and it was, I mean, like I said, it was scary because I mean, in that job, you know, it paid well, I had benefits, I had all kinds of stuff, paid vacation and stuff, but it just wasn't enough. And it's, and it's not enough to handcuff yourself to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to deny, to deny what really burns in your heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, uh, you know, so I find, I find these conversations just really encouraging because so many people are just like, well, I, I have all these dreams and what to do. So that book, we're going to have a link to that book in the description because that book is, it's actually pretty funny. It in, is. In, in many ways. And then you're like, what did he just say? Like, <laughs> <laughs> the fun the, the other fun thing though is that on the audiobook he reads it himself and he's scottish and he's got this awesome sense of humor oh, so fantastic. to listen to him talk directly about it is hilarious he's even funny <laughs> i love it i love it and with good humor because we like to have humor especially in these kinds of situations where it's like and you've never done it before and there's no I, there's some roadmap, quote unquote, but then it's not really appropriate for a lot of us, you know, especially when we're in the later years of our lives, because there's so many stupid messages in the matrix that say, it's too late, me, 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 me. and you have to get beyond that, you know, inner dialogue that's not even yours. Right. Exactly. How do you how do you uh, overcome that? Well, um, OK, let me let me back up a little bit, yeah. because um, before the way I ended up getting into the job, um, I was I had been um, kind of stalked by the CEO of the company. Um, he had seen me playing, playing around town at, at like an Einstein's or something like that. And he dropped his card in my, in my thing. And I, and he had a collar, you know, he, he was at some offshoot of a, I forget what religion it was, but, you know, and, and I was thinking, well, you know, he probably wants me to come join his church or something. So I kind of ignored it for a while, <laughs> but then eventually he caught up with me and told me what he wanted. And that was the first, my, my first introduction to the um, homeless shelter was he, they were having a Thanksgiving um, dinner for the homeless and they wanted music and all the volunteers were going to be serving the homeless, wow. you know, like a, like a place, which, and I got there and it was like, wow, this is really great, you know, because I just saw the love and care for it. But, um, <laughs> so that's, that's how I got into, into the whole thing. I just, I just lost my train of he thought. He stopped now. you. I, I just love that. The way you said it. You. Well, well, I kind of did. <laughs> but I mean, we, we became real good friends, but then um, around uh, and after I had played, I had, I wasn't working for them yet, but I was, it was kind of like a real low point in my life. I was having um, prop issues with, um, <clears throat> with uh, just working. Um, cause I, I, I'd gone to court and, um, I, I, they were kind of hitting my check. What little check I was getting, I was working for, for a local, um, fitness facility. But the thing was, is pretty much because of, um, the child support that they were hitting with my check, I was pretty much not making anything. 
Holy so, moly. So I was really, really a low point and I, and I knew I needed to talk to someone. So I had become friends with him. And so I went to him and asked him if he would counsel me, just, you know, talk to me. And that was one of the first things he talked to me about was, you know, what was I listening to? What was, you know, whose voice was I listening to in my head? And, and it, you know, it pointed out because when, when I was growing up and now I love, I love my parents. My, my mom died when I was 14. My dad, he wasn't, you know, a real, you know, touchy feely, not, you know, loving guy, but he was, he was there. But I, but he really left me with a feeling that I wasn't going to amount to much. And yeah. I dealt with that through a lot of my life. So what this this guy told me my friend told you know talked to me and he said well that's the voice you're listening to in your head you got to change that yeah and that was the start of me realizing and starting to stop that voice yeah. and and think about well no I am okay I can do this I can yeah. do this and then, I am doing and, this holy yeah. moly and so when that book came along, it's like, okay, this is, you know, it just kind of established it. And then he really breaks it down, you know, but. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's that's really awesome. And I want to commend you. I want to commend you because one of the things you mentioned, just, you just snuck it in there. The whole thing of paying child support. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because th there's way too many men and women who skipped that altogether for whatever yeah. reason. And you didn't, and my hat is off to you. Well, you know, my kids, I, it, it, I look at it now, I mean, in terms of that, that my, at the time when we broke up, it, was, it, it wasn't like, you know, it was a, a really tense thing, but we just weren't in love, I think. Yeah. But the, what broke my heart was I, my family, because I had, at the time I had, no, I had three girls at the time when we broke up, I had three, three little girls and, wow. and it broke my heart to lose my family. And at one point, my, my ex had was th thinking about, you know, moving into another state. And, you know, my thought was, well, I got to move because I, there was no way I wasn't going to be in their yeah. lives. Aww. Yeah. And so it was just very important. She ended up staying here and, you know, I just, you know, we raised the kids together and I was always there wanting to be, you know, she needed the disciplinarian. I did there, you know, certain things that I had with my daughters are awesome. Was a bad guy. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but your daughters are, are awesome. So there you go. They are. Yeah. Which <laughs> you done good. You both yeah, did good. Yeah. And, and, you know, now we're good, you know, me and my ex were really good friends and I, you know, I've told her, I've thanked her for, cause she was a custodial parent, but I had him, you know, pretty much every weekend, except for two weekends during the year and then throughout the week and whenever she needed me to take them, I had them. So, you know, I just, you know, was very happy to thank her for just being the mother that she was. And Aww. I would never take that away. Oh, that's so sweet. Yay. <laughs> See, ladies and gents, these men do exist. They really, really do. <laughs> well, you know something though that that worries me is I I feel like I've I've kind of in I'll say this tongue in cheek, but I feel like I've kind of screwed up my girls because all, all three of my girls are awesome. They're they're artists. They're talented. They're you know dynamic. But one thing I worry about is, you know, that saying that, you know, your girls look for a guy like their father. <laughs> and I, I, especially having three girls, um, you know, I, it softened me so much. And I mean, mm -hmm. I, all, all my life, I've been kind of a romantic. You know, when I was a kid, my favorite movie was Romeo and Juliet. Aw, so, the original <laughs> one? Yeah, with uh, Olivia Husey. I was yeah, in love yeah. with her. <laughs> but uh, and, and so I worry because you know the guys my my daughters have issues with guys and I think you know th just the amount of affection and love because for me it was like I'm not going to be like my father with my kids I'm going to be there I'm going to be loving and hugging and you know just crying with them and so I worry that they're they're looking for that in guys and and it's you know, it kind of worries me because the guys that I see and meet and uh, I don't know. <laughs> huh? They're not like that? Yeah. 
Yeah. That at least yeah. they haven't found the ones like yeah. that yet. Well, you know what? Also, trust how you raise them. I, mm -hmm. I know I, I have to tell myself that a lot of the times, especially with stepkids. It's like, I, I just got to have trust that I raised them right. Yeah. And and they, they know they're right from wrong. And mm -hmm. I'm sure your girls do. So, yeah. yeah. Well, a lot, a lot of it is just the, the emotional um, support. Yes. You know, they get they get guys and they don't feel like they're getting that emotional support. Yeah. And I worry sometimes that maybe I gave them a little too much. You know, <laughs> I was always there. You know, I was always wanted to be there, you know, yeah. when it, when they were hurt yeah. and crying and stuff. So, yeah. Well, anyway. and I think it's a it's a different it's a different mindset that is evolving with men. And so, you know, that balance of the masculine and feminine within, regardless of our gender, is is something to navigate, you know, men being more in touch with their their feminine side. And and of course, the women, especially what I call the man hating feminists, having to stand down from their warring masculine, you know, oh, you know, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. And just to be able to balance the two so that they're more dynamic and you don't stay overly in the feminine or overly in the masculine, whether or not you're a man or a woman. So, right. Yeah. So let's talk more about your music journey because I'm just fascinated. I am just fascinated by it, you know, because <laughs> I know so many musicians and artists and dancers who you know just have these huge dreams and just taking that step and committing to the dream i i mean that's a step that most people will never ever ever take yeah um okay so <laughs> it it's it's neat because someone who i kind of kind of consider um in terms of my performance wise um, I, when I was in Boston, I, I um, kind of caught on to uh, Livingston Taylor, who is James Taylor's brother. A lot of people don't know him, but he, um, he, he's retired now from teaching at Berklee School of Music in Boston, but he used to teach stage performance. And when I saw him, I was just floored because his, the dynamic stage presence that he has just is what, what, what I wanted and what I strive for. So, um, so for me, um, you know, my, my biggest thing is I want to be an entertainer, you know, and not just, and which I think is what, what makes me popular and good is that I get a lot of people who, who see me and they're not just, you know, loving the music, but loving watching the music happen. Yes. Well, and you're very and, engaging, uh -huh. you know, your, your stage presence is very engaging. And people like that. They want yeah. to be engaged. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> well, no, I, I want to know the process just in terms of, you know, you made the decision, I'm doing this full time. And then you were relating uh, being in Boston and meeting. I mean, that's amazing to me. James Taylor's brother and your voice is very similar to james taylor at times which yeah. i think is just like <laughs> what you know i mean the universe can't just be speaking you uh. know? <laughs> it, it, it's like going hi hello there's like support here so in other words you went from step to step to step and you met these people who are in contribution to your dream basically mm -hmm. Yeah, and and um, just just jumping back a little bit, um, the whole James Taylor thing was when I was when I was young, um, I I got into James Taylor simply because I I had I ended up having I was into rock and roll, but ended up having to get an acoustic guitar because the guitar that my dad had bought me was really bad, um, <laughs> and so I didn't know anyone who knew who list who played one of those outside of I remember uh Richie Havens at Woodstock which not that I was there but I just remember the the show the movie and everything but um but my sister had the Sweet Baby James album and then she listened to Joni Mitchell and Carol King and so I got into the whole acoustic singer songwriter era back in the late late 60s into the 70s yeah um 
And, and so that, so James Taylor at first was just the guitar. I would love the way he played the guitar. And it's funny because people tell me that I sound so much like James Taylor, but that wasn't something I tried to do. It's just something that happened. Yeah, is that and awesome? Then, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> And, and so, I mean, during that time, I went through everybody, you know, Crosby, Stills and Nash and, you know, all these singer songwriters. When I got to Boston, though, um, you know, Boston is such a James Taylor, you know, city because they're out on Martha's Vineyard. And I started playing the streets and subways of Boston. And so James Taylor and I and at that time, I was mostly just singing just covers. And I pretty much knew everything that James Taylor did. To the point where you know uh, people were so amazed that I actually got written up by the Boston Globe in, in a, a combined article of, on street musicians about I that. Love it. Yeah, because um, I was I remember being out and I kept running into different musicians around the streets saying, you know, there's a reporter looking for you, and finally, finally they caught up with me. <laughs> what an amazing story! That's yeah. fun. So cool. that's that's how the whole James Taylor thing came about. But then living in, in Boston, I um, started really wanting to write music. And I had, you know, I, I just it, so for so many years, I just thought, you know, you had to be, you know, these people like James Taylor, Carol King, Joy Mitchell, you know, they they were they popped out with a pen and pad in their hands. That's what I thought you, you had to be born with this. You know, it's something in their genes. And so, but what I did was I decided, well, no, I got to figure this out. So I started hanging around the Berkeley school. I couldn't afford to go to Berkeley school of music, but I started hanging around their bookstore and their library and, and reading everything I could on songwriting and then started to practice the different oh, wow. methods. And to, to the point where I developed the ability to what I, I mean, I consider myself now um, on, on my banner, it's, you know, songwriter extraordinaire. I'm a prolific songwriter. I, in fact, I wrote two songs last night, you know, because I just I write it. and write. Yeah. And, and I mean, some of the, some of the stuff, it just amazes me. Some of the things that, you know, the lines and the writing and the inspiration I get to write different songs. So that so, is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that is essentially, that's a divine creative energy that lives you it animates every cell in your body mm -hmm. yeah. i mean it can't get any better than that kids you know i mean <laughs> really that's that's what life is you know you're being animated by this creative force that is inspiring yes so you know what uh, good on you <laughs> good on you but I mean, so, and that, huh? Go ahead. What brought you? What brought you to New Mexico from from Boston? So you're from the East Coast. Yeah, I grew up in Lower New York State, downstate New York. I say that because if I say upstate, anybody from any further than like Binghamton and stuff just laugh at me because there's so much <laughs> state to that. <laughs> there's so much country to that state. Yeah, but there anyway. Is. Um, I was living in Boston. I, I lived in Boston two different times, one before I was married, and then uh, the second time when I was married, and we had our first little girl and didn't want to raise her in Boston. And at the time, my, my wife's parents had retired in New Mexico, and my parents were both deceased. Um, and there was so there was nothing really keeping me on the East Coast. And I said, well, fine, let's go to New Mexico. So that's how I ended up out here in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. ha, ha, ha. Well, when I met you, I first met you, it was in 2004 at, was it the, was it the blue? Um, I'm trying to the, think the blue. Not the blue lamp, blue dragon, something like that. I think it was a blue dragon. Was blue it something dragon. like that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I was, I was doing my little, little tours up and down 25 uh -huh. from Texas. And uh, and I remember being there, and I'm like going, "Who is that?" I walked in, and you were, you were playing, and I'm like, "Who is that?" <laughs> and then so it, it and then it's so funny, you know, me having moved here after all these years, and then going to I it was some other it was some other open mic kind of thing, and and there were you there you were again. I'm like going. Oh my God, it's, it's like, so that community 
And I want to get into this because essentially what you're doing is you're building community. Uh-huh. And so um, I want to ask you because so 2017, it all starts. You quit your job and you commit. Uh-huh. 2018, 2019, what's happening for you? Okay, so and how did uh, you go about it? Um, <clears throat> uh, now back, back uh, let's see, I, I probably started playing in this area maybe, let's say I got here maybe around 92, 93. I actually, when I first got to Albuquerque, I wasn't really planning to play music because I just figured it was a big country, you know, country city or, um, <laughs> uh, or, or, you know, yeah. more Hispanic music and stuff. So I didn't figure I'd fit in. Um, luckily I had a job that was so bad. It just drove me nuts <laughs> that um, I stuck with it for about a year. And then after that, it's like, I put in my two week notice, went down to, um, the flea market at the fairgrounds at Expo New Mexico and asked him, you know, can I just come in and set up and basically busk that basically set up and play there. And it took him two weeks to, to finally give me an okay. But once I started doing that, I started, you know, I made some cards, business cards and started getting private gigs. So cool. through kind of throughout that period, I was, I was very much, I, I got very much into fitness training. I was, I became an aerobic instructor um, later on a, a personal trainer, but that was kind of like my mainstay was doing fitness and I'd get, you know, gigs, which usually pay pretty well, you know, especially if they were private gigs, I wasn't doing, I think I did a few back when you could still smoke in bars. I think, um, I <laughs> oh, did a few days. Yeah. I, you know, I, I remember doing one on central and I forget the name of the bar, but you know, it's the stage was there, but then there were pool tables right in front of you. And it was kind of like a dive joint, <laughs> but you know, doing stuff like that. But, um, so as I, as, as I came along, you know, finally making the decision in, in 2017, and, and it's, it's funny because the decision that I, I struggled with was that, you know, I, what I called it sitting on the fence, because on one side, it was easy. Fitness is easy for me. It's, you know, I can, I know I can make money at it yeah. and get it you know, be very good at it and get people to pay me for it. Yeah. But my love was music. And so it was hard for me to try to shift that and say, okay, the uncertainty of music. And that's, that's one thing in, um, uh, in the book on fuck yourself, he talks about is that, you know, we're so, we're so locked into everything has to be certain, you know, it's gotta be, it's gotta be, you know, I gotta know what's going to happen, you know, every minute of my life. And it's like, that's not what life is like. Yeah. You know, and, and he just talks about, you know, jump for the uncertainty because that's where things change. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I, at, at that point, when I read that book and read that one section um, that left me in tears, I said, screw it, I'm going. And so I jumped over to that one side and I said, you know, and, and the, the, another thing that I got from Livingston Taylor was um, he's got this one video um, in in one of his workshops that he talks about, you know, the, the reason that I'm here is because I can't do anything else. And I, and I decided to just in, in, invoke that in my life is that cool. I love music and I refuse to do anything else. Yeah. Good for you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> good for you. Good for you. And, and did you notice that people started showing up just key key uh ass assistance that would you know lead you to the next thing and the next and the next and the next well i i think i'm seeing more of that now um when i made that decision and it's funny because at the time i was i was doing a i was hosting an open mic downtown at red door brewing and um one night uh, a friend um jose ponce shows up and, and I, gosh, I'm not even sure if I had ever actually met him before. I think I did, but didn't remember, but he's kind of like a big name. He, he's got a lot to do with the New Mexico Music Awards here and everything, but he shows up at the open mic and we end up sitting down and talking just briefly. Um, and, you know, he's, he's very business. He knows the business so well. And it kind of scared me because I, I, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but we ended up meeting for 
for um, coffee, I think a few days later. And one of the things he, he it expressed to me is that, okay, Oscar, now that you're doing this, um, you know, you, there's you and then another million singer songwriters. What's going to make you stand out from them? And I, you know, it it's taken me probably a good maybe year to, to, to figure that out. But I think I feel very, I, I mean, I guess you call it branding now in my brand. Yes. But one of the biggest things I think that what, what I was talking about before is just, um, you know, number one, being entertaining, being dynamic, being not just someone sitting up there spewing, you know, a song, but that I'm performing the song and that people are enjoying not just listening to it, but liking it. And that I think that's part probably what is my shining point is that I want people to walk away feeling good. And that's, and that's kind of my music writing too, is that I, I, you know, I've got my blues stuff, but it's, I, I consider it sort of a lighter side of blues, but pretty much everyone who walks away, walks away smiling and enjoying what they're, what they just, right you know encountered that that's uh, true i've experienced it so <laughs> yes he, he's, he's not lying it's <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool uh, so how do you how do you sustain how do you sustain the inspiration uh because i i i know that for myself you know it's there's there's a lot of um it, and i think we're similar because we we're disciplined you know, we're very disciplined in what it is that we're doing. But I know that for myself, you know, there's some days where I'm just like, going, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't fucking want to. And and sometimes I say that I don't want to and I got to because, uh -huh. I, I, you know, when you're working with people or or you have committed to show up for a presentation or a talk or a, a music gig, you don't get to say that I'm not showing up. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that you do in order to, you know, either snap out of it or face it, make friends with it? What is it that you do? Well, I think, uh, the, again, the first thing that is always on my mind is that I can't do anything else. You know, this is this is paying my bills for one. Um, but it, it's it's like um, I think I, I was writing to you a little bit about, you know, being in Albuquerque has been interestingly challenging because I don't get a lot of response here. And, you know, I just I, I actually just ended um, my relationship with someone who was doing booking for me that was not doing a good job. And it nah, that's another yeah. story. Yeah, and that's good. That's good. Yeah. It's like not a match. Yeah. Thank you. And but but. The thing is, is that the places that I go to, like I go up to Red River, I go down to Rio Doso, you know, these places that I'd never been before. And I get these people who are just amazingly receptive to my music, to me and enjoy it. I, I was up in uh, um, Red River um, last week on Saturday, I believe it was. And, you know, I get up there and the place is packed and most of them were there for me. That's and so, so, awesome. so for me, that energizes me. Someone was asked, I think someone was just talking to me about that. You know, don't you get tired? You know, cause I, I play, I go and I play easily, you know, two hours I can do on my head, yeah. you know, standing on my yeah. head. I don't take breaks. I was kind of getting a bad reputation um, when I was playing Albuquerque because, you know, musicians were complaining because I'd come in, I play two hours. And then, you know, when they come in, you know, the owners are thinking, well, should, you know, why are you taking a break? You know, Oscar doesn't. And it's like, all right. <laughs> You are raising the bar, my friend. That's yeah, awesome. But, but to me, I mean, two hours is nothing. It goes yeah. way too fast. And then I've done three. I've, I've actually done five hours without break. So I and, and a lot of that comes from being from busking in Boston. You know, I'm just used yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah. No, but, that's so funny. You bust in Boston. I bust in Berkeley. <laughs> California, though. <laughs> you're good. You're a good talent, too. I don't gee. But, but you know, my my loves are, you know, where you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 But, I do the music to just balance out all of all of that. Uh-huh. So, but anyways, I want you to continue because 
I think this is important. This is important for other artists and musicians and dancers and creatives mm -hmm. to hear. Well, um, and, and like I was saying, you know, the motivation is is people. I, I have realized that I love entertaining. I love making people feel good. And so that is the biggest thing. And, and it's like that, you know, I drive three hours up the Red River, play two hours and then drive three hours back. But the thing is, after that gig, you know, and I didn't want to stop. I was still ready to go, but it was time for, for them to close down. But after that, no problem driving three hours back. But then, um, you know, I, it's interesting because I think a day or two later, I had a gig here and it was like, uh, I, I try not to be critical, but I noticed that when I play around Albuquerque, people kind of ignore you. They don't want to acknowledge you. And, and Isn't that, that weird? Me, I've noticed yeah. that. They, it, they don't. Stupid town. Pardon me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I am so sorry it's just it seems like people are zombies or they're brain dead yeah and and so you know i did this gig and it, it again was a two-hour gig but because and and it's funny because people will walk right by me and not even look at me and i smile i smile i try to make eye contact with people kind of all over the place and so at the end of that gig i was exhausted i bet you were I, yeah, because there's no I, exchange. There's no energy yeah. exchange. Yep, exactly. And and so, you and know, that's. I'm, I'm so sorry, but you know what? At the same time, um, I I know that my Christopher and I were we were trying to uh, catch one of your shows up at the um up at the holler. You know, uh -huh. we go there. We go there on motorcycles, and I mean, you know. And it's a fun place. So I'm hoping that you have a good time up there. Oh yeah, I, I have a great time. And, and that's, and, and it's funny because um, just, just this past year, they started paying me a little, but I used to go up there just to basically busk. And I, and I'd walk out of there, you know, with, with good money plus a great, you know, great time. Yeah. Yeah. But cool. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I I'm so, so, yeah, I don't understand. I don't understand the Albuquerque. And I know that when I was a, when I was a working musician, I would come in a couple of times and like open for somebody like at the Sunshine. Theater. That place is a dive. It's frightening. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, I used to play here. Yeah. I mean, it's just like not cool. So uh. I don't have. Yeah, I, I feel you. I feel you on that. But I am happy that you are, you know, you're out there in unexpected places and getting the love that you deserve yeah you know because i think i think albuquerque like i said zombies people are indifferent and these are people who prop don't do a whole lot of creative anything you know mm -hmm. i mean let's let's face it and and not to pull you know we're just talking the way we're talking reality here <laughs> <laughs> and I love that the universe is just showing. But look over here, over here. Look at these people. Yep. <laughs> and they're all about you. So that's cool. So that is so that good on you. Good on you. So what's I, up next? Oh gosh. Um, tr well, travel. I mean, I, I, I really again, you know, I um. Albuquerque's kicking my butt. I mean, just being here. Yeah. And but and that's only because I mean, I, I again like that situation that I had with that Booker, um, you know, I, which you know there were awful things I found out about. You know that she was not not only charging the she charged me, but she was also charging the venue. So that was kind of like a screwy thing. Wow. And so I just and and then the thing was is like the Red River gig was um, one that was really big for me. It's up at Noisy Water Winery. And uh, the girl, the manager up there loved me. And I mean, after the first time I, I, I was up there, I started building a following. So um, this booker was the one that would get me up there. And then, you know, when I went to kind of cut it off with her, she's kind of saying, well, you're not gonna be able to book up there anymore. 
And so luckily when I got up there, the girls like the girl totally vetoed that idea from her. From That's the, so from the awesome. Booker. See, you go yeah. out on your own. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, she's what she's she wants to work with me and make sure that I get up there. That's so, cool. That's cool. But, uh, see, but that's that allies. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and I think a lot a lot of it is realizing that I do. Sometimes I still feel very alone, like I'm really trying to trudge through this by myself. But I realize and especially with with the different um, different towns that I've been to and realizing the, the following that I'm building. Yeah. You know, it's 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 good for my heart because I, I still struggle with realizing, yeah. OK, I'm, I'm doing OK. I'm I'm, I'm good. I, I can. Yeah. You know. Oh, honey, I, <laughs> I got that going on, too. And, you know, I mean, it's one of the reasons why I do what I do. And I reach out to the people that I do to share the information uh -huh. because there is so much, like so much indifference, you know, and part of what I think I'm trying to do, you're trying to do it, folks are trying to do this is to, you know, just open the heart, people, hi, you know, we're here, let's, let's connect, let's get yeah. along, let's entertain each other, <laughs> let's speak from the heart, let's, let's do music. Um, yep. So I was wondering, if you would play uh-oh <laughs> if you don't if you don't want to you don't have no no to. i can't i just gotta to. grab my guitar but, but we have a few minutes and i would love for you to sing us a song um because we deserve you <laughs> okay let me grab that. my guitar okay all right it's gonna be it just i just happen to have a guitar sitting of here of course you do <laughs> My songwriting system, my, my songwriting is insane because I, the way I, I, my girl, my daughters are always, they, they, they always give me a hard time because they, you know, they say that I'm a robot and that I don't sleep much, which I don't. And I kind of, <laughs> kind of got that when I was in college, I started doing my studying, you know, around one or two o'clock and then I would get up for, you know, eight, yeah, nine o'clock classes. Hours. Yep. <laughs> it's quiet. No one's going to call you. No one's going to text. Yep. You know, and, I get it. But, but I, I, I try to be that person. Well, you know, you got to take care of yourself. So I, um, you know, I tell myself, okay, Oscar, it's time to go to bed. You know, it's like maybe 10 30, 11 o'clock, 11 30. And sure, so right. I, I get up and I look at and I grab my guitar. <laughs> and so the next thing I know this morning, it was about 2 30 when I finished my second song. <laughs> <laughs> wow okay that's inspiration yeah. it, it's animating you so uh, you know and you're well rested regardless yeah but um but yeah <laughs> that's my that's my song routine i did i end up playing in in the middle of the night <laughs> okay can you hear that okay i can you're walking down a busy city street well you'd be the only one i'd want to meet i'd do anything just to catch your eye whatever i could to keep you from walking right by but i don't want to be the great pretender and say something wrong that might just offend you if i had some game some money or fame could i have you right here next to me now you with your long legs and corvette red lips a smile that could surely launch a thousand ships the things a man would do just to be by your side the things he would say to not be denied but i won't take that low road of least resistance i think if i'm honest and a little persistent i might have some gain some money or fame and have you right here next to me i may not be the fanciest bulb on your tree i may not be the big 
biggest fish in your sea But I've got some style and I've got some charm That may break a window and set off your alarm Now I'm gonna play the game the way that I choose Comfort like those old pair of shoes I wanna make you feel like you're my North Star Make you feel even prettier than you already are So honey, take a moment, won't you give me a glance And set me at ease so I might have a chance Cause I've got no game, no money or fame But I'm hoping you'll be right here next to me I may not be the fanciest bulb on your tree I may not be the biggest fish in your sea But I've got some style and I have got some charm That may break a window and set off your alarm Take a moment, won't you give me that glance? Let me know I'm not the only one thinks I got a chance. Cause I've got no game, no money or fame. But I'm hoping you'll be right here next to me. I said I've got no game, no money or fame. But I'm hoping that you'll be right here next to me. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. (laughs) Thanks so much. This was a really great conversation. Um, Anything else you want to add before we before we close? We'll have all his information down the show notes uh, below, kids. Um, Um, Not much. Just come out and see me when when if you know whoever's out there. And pass me, share me, pass me, pass me on. I'm on Spotify. I'm on all kinds of stuff. Awesome. But anyway, Mara, Mara I love you. You're wonderful. I love you and it's too. so good to see you again. It's good to see you. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for being here. We'll have you here again. Okay. And yeah, uh, I'm I'm proud of you. I'm so, so proud of you. Thank you. Um, you know, because this is meaningful for me because I love tracking. I love tracking my friends who are living their dreams and doing it for real (laughs) so um okay loves that's it for today thank you oscar thank you you're welcome so very much and so until next time my love bugs here's to your love truth and beauty